Act Two. The common room of Proctor's house, eight days later. At the right is a door opening on the fields outside. A fireplace is at the left, and behind it, a stairway leading upstairs. It is the low, dark, and rather long living room of the time. As the curtain rises, the room is empty. From above, Elizabeth is heard softly singing to the children. Presently, the door opens and John Proctor enters, carrying his gun. He glances about the room as he comes toward the fireplace, then halts for an instant as he hears her singing. He continues on to the fireplace, leans the gun against the wall as he swings a pot out of the fire and smells it. Then he lifts out the ladle and tastes. He is not quite pleased. He reaches to a cupboard, takes a pinch of salt, and drops it into the pot. As he is tasting again, her footsteps are heard on the stair. He swings the pot into the fireplace and goes to a basin and washes his hands and face. Elizabeth enters. What keeps you so late? It's almost dark. I were planting far out to the forest edge. Oh, you're done then? Aye, the farm is seated. The boys asleep? They will be soon. And she goes to the fireplace, proceeds to ladle up stew in a dish. Pray now for a fair summer. Aye. Are you well today? I am. She brings the plate to the table and indicating the food. It is a rabbit. Proctor going to the table. Oh, is it? In Jonathan's trap? No, she walked into the house this afternoon. I found her sitting in the corner like she come to visit. Oh, that's a good sign walking in. Pray God. It hurt my heart to strip her, poor rabbit. She sits and watches him taste it. It's well seasoned. Elizabeth blushing with pleasure. I took great care. She's tender. I. He eats. She watches him. I think we'll see Greenfield soon. It's warm as blood beneath the clods. That's well. Proctor eats, then looks up. If the crop is good, I'll buy George Jacob's heifer. How would that please you? Aye, it would. Proctor with a grin. I mean to please you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, it is hard to say. I know it, John. He gets up, goes to her, kisses her. She receives it. With a certain disappointment, he returns to the table. Proctor as gently as he can. Cider? Elizabeth, with a sense of reprimanding herself for having forgotten. Aye. She gets up and goes and pours a glass for him. He now arches his back. This farm's a continent when you go foot by foot dropping seeds in it. Elizabeth coming with the cider. It must be. Proctor, he drinks a long drought, then, putting the glass down. You ought to bring some flowers in the house. Oh, I forgot. I will tomorrow. It's winter in here yet. On Sunday, let you come with me and we'll walk the farm together. I never see such a load of flowers on the earth. With good feeling, he goes and looks up at the sky through the open doorway. Lilacs have a purple smell. Lilac is the smell of nightfall, I think. Massachusetts is a beauty in the spring. Aye, it is. There is a pause. She is watching him from the table as he stands there absorbing the night. It is as though she would speak but cannot. Instead now, she takes up his plate and glass and fork and goes with him to the basin. Her back is turned to him. He turns to her and watches her. A sense of their separation rises. I think you're sad again. Are you? Elizabeth, she doesn't want friction, and yet she must. You come so late. I thought you'd gone to Salem this afternoon. Why? I have no business in Salem. You did speak of going earlier this week. Proctor, he knows what she means. I've thought better of it since. Mary Warren's there today. Why'd you let her? You heard me forbid her to go to Salem any more. I couldn't stop her. Proctor, holding back a full condemnation of her. It is a fault. It is a fault, Elizabeth. You're the mistress here, not Mary Warren. She frightened all my strength away. How may that mouse frighten you, Elizabeth? You, It is a mouse no more. I forbid her go. And she raises up her chin like the daughter of a prince and says to me, I must go to Salem, Goody Proctor. I am an official of the court. Court? What court? Aye. It is a proper court they have now. They've sent four judges out of Boston, she says, weighty magistrates of the general court, 
and at the head sits the deputy governor of the province. Proctor astonished. Why, she's mad. I would to God she were. There be fourteen people in the jail now, she says. Proctor simply looks at her, unable to grasp it. And they'll be tried, and the court have power to hang them, too, she says. Proctor, scoffing, but without conviction. <laughs> They'd never hang. The deputy governor promised hanging if they'll not confess, John. The town's gone wild, I think. She speak of Abigail, and I thought she were a saint to hear her. Abigail brings the other girls into the court, and where she walks the crowd will part like the sea for Israel. And folks are brought before them, and if they scream and howl and fall to the floor, the person's clapped in the jail for bewitching them. Proctor wide-eyed. <sighs> it is a black mischief. I think you must go to Salem, John. He turns to her. I think so. You must tell them it is a fraud. Proctor, thinking beyond this. Aye, it is. It is, surely. Let you go to Ezekiel Cheever. He knows you well. And tell him what she said to you last week in her uncle's house. She said it had not to do with witchcraft, did she not? Proctor and thought. Aye, she did. She did. Now a pause. Elizabeth quietly, fearing to anger him by prodding. God forbid you keep that from the court, John. I think they must be told. Proctor quietly, struggling with this thought. Aye, they must. They must. It is a wonder they do believe her. I would go to Salem now, John. Let you go tonight. I'll think on it. Elizabeth with her courage now. You cannot keep it, John. Proctor angry. I know I cannot keep it. I say I will think on it. Elizabeth hurt and very coldly. Good, then let you think on it. She stands and starts to walk out of the room. I am only wondering how I may prove what she told me, Elizabeth. If the girl's a saint now, I think it not easy to prove she's fraud, and the town gone so silly. She told it to me in a room alone. I have no proof for it. You are alone with her? Proctor, stubbornly. For a moment alone, I. Why, then... It is not as you told me. Proctor, his anger rising. For a moment, I say. The others come in soon after. Elizabeth quietly. She has suddenly lost all faith in him. Do as you wish, then. She starts to turn. Woman? She turns to him. I'll not have your suspicion any more. Elizabeth a little loftily. I have no... I'll not have it. Then let you not earn it. Proctor, with a violent undertone. You doubt me yet? Elizabeth, with a smile, to keep her dignity. John, if it were not Abigail that you must go to hurt, would you falter now? I think not. Now look you, I see what I see, John. Proctor, with solemn warning. You will not judge me more, Elizabeth. I have good reason to think before I charge fraud on Abigail, and I will think on it. Let you look to your own improvement before you go to judge your husband any more. I have forgot, Abigail, and, and I. Spare me. You forget nothing and forgive nothing. Learn charity, woman. I have gone tiptoe in this house all seven months since she is gone. I have not moved from there to there without, I think, to please you, and still an everlasting funeral marches round your heart. I cannot speak, but I am doubted every moment, judged for lies as though I come into court when I come into this house. John, you are not open with me. You saw her with a crowd, you said. Now you, I'll plead my honesty no more, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, now she would justify herself. John, I am only, no more. I should have roared you down when you first told me your suspicion, but I wilted, and like a Christian I confessed, confessed. Some dream I had must have mistaken you for God that day, but you're not, you're not, and let you remember it. Let you look sometimes for the goodness in me, and judge me not. I do not judge you. The magistrate sits in your heart that judges you. I never thought you but a good man, John. With a smile. Only somewhat bewildered. Proctor laughing bitterly. <laughs> Elizabeth, your justice would freeze beer. He turns suddenly toward a sound outside. He starts for the door as Mary Warren enters. As soon as he sees her, he goes directly to her and grabs her by their cloak. Furious. How do you go to Salem when I forbid it? Do you mock me? shaking her. I'll whip you if you dare leave this house again. Strangely, she doesn't resist him, but hangs limply by his grip. 
I am sick. I am sick, Mr. Proctor. Pray, pray, hurt me not. Her strangeness throws him off in her evident parlor and weakness. He frees her. My insides are all shuddery. I'm in the proceedings all day, sir. Proctor with draining anger. His curiosity is draining it. And what of these proceedings here? When will you proceed to keep this house as you are paid nine pound a year to do? And my wife not wholly well. As though to compensate Mary, Warren goes to Elizabeth with a small rag doll. I made a gift for you today, Goody Proctor. I had to sit long hours in a chair and pass the time with sewing. Elizabeth perplexed, looking at the doll. Why? Thank you. It's a fair puppet. Mary Warren, with a trembling, decayed voice. We must all love each other now, Goody Proctor. Elizabeth amazed at her strangeness. Aye, indeed, we must. Mary Warren, glancing at the room. I'll get up early in the morning and clean the house. I must sleep now. She turns and starts off. Mary? She halts. Is it true? There be fourteen women arrested? No, sir. There be thirty-nine now. She suddenly breaks off and sobs and sits down, exhausted. Why, she's weeping. What ails you, child? Goody Osborne will hang. There is a shocked pause while she sobs. Hang? He calls into her face. Hang, you say? Mary Warren through her weeping. Aye. The deputy governor will permit it? He sentenced her. He must. To ameliorate it. But not Sarah Good. For Sarah Good confessed, you see. Confessed? To what? That she, in horror at the memory, she sometimes made a compact with Lucifer and wrote her name in his black book with her blood and bound herself to torment Christians till God's thrown down and we must all worship hell forevermore. Pause. But... Surely you know what a jabberer she is. Did you tell them that? Mr. Proctor, in open court, she near to choked us all to death. How? Choked you? She sent her spirit out. Oh, Mary. Mary, surely you... Mary Warren, with an indignant edge. She tried to kill me many times, Goody Proctor. Why, I never heard you mention that before. I never knew it before. I never knew anything before. When she come into the court, I say to myself, I must not accuse this woman, for she sleeps in ditches and so very old and poor. But then, then she sit there, denying and denying, and I feel a misty coldness climbing up my back, and the skin on my skull begin to creep, and I feel a clamp around my neck, and I cannot breathe air. And then, entranced, I hear a voice, a screaming voice, and it were my voice, and all at once I remember everything she'd done to me. Why? What did she do to you? Mary Warren, like one awakened to a marvelous secret insight. So many times, Mr. Proctor, she come to this very door begging bread and a cup of cider, and mark this, whenever I turned her away empty, she mumbled. Mumbled? She may mumble if she's hungry. But what does she mumble? You must remember, Goody Proctor. Last month, a Monday, I think, she walked away, and I thought my guts would burst for two days after. Do you remember it? I do, I think, but... And so I told that to Judge Hawthorne, and he asks her so. Goody Osborne, says he, what curse do you mumble that this girl must fall sick after turning you away? And then she replies, mimicking an old crone. Why, your excellence, no curse at all. I only say my commandments. I hope I may say my commandments, says she. And that's an upright answer. Aye, but then Judge Hawthorne say, recite for us your commandments, leaning avidly toward them. And of all the ten, she could not say a single one. She never knew no commandments, and they had her in a flat lie. And so condemned her? Mary Warren, now a little strained, seeing his stubborn doubt. Why, they must when she condemned herself. But the proof! The proof! Mary Warren, with greater impatience with him. I told you, the proof. It's hard proof, hard as rock, the judges said. Proctor. He pauses an instant. Then, you will not go to court again, Mary Warren. I must tell you, sir, I will be gone every day now. I am amazed you do not see what weighty work we do. What work you do? It's a strange work for a Christian girl to hang old women. But, Mr. Proctor, they will not hang them if they confess. Sarah Good will only sit in jail some time, recalling. 
And here's a wonder for you. Think on this. Goody Good is pregnant. Pregnant? Are they mad? The woman's near to sixty. They had Dr. Griggs examine her, and she's full to the brim, and smoking a pipe all these years, and no husband either. But she's safe, thank God, for they'll not hurt the innocent child. But be that not a marvel? You must see it, sir. It's God's work we do. So I'll be gone every day for some time. I'm, I'm an official of the court, they say, and I... She's been edging toward off stage. I'll official you. He strides to the mantle, takes down the whip hanging there. Mary Warren, terrified, but coming erect, striving for her authority. I'll not stand whipping any more. Elizabeth hurriedly as Proctor approaches. Mary, promise you'll stay at home. Mary Warren backing from him, but keeping her erect posture, striving, striving for her away. The devil's loose in Salem, Mr. Proctor. We must discover where he's hiding. I'll whip the devil out of you. With whip raised, he reaches out for her, and she streaks away and yells. Mary Warren pointing at Elizabeth. I saved her life today. Silence. His whip comes down. Elizabeth softly. I am accused. Mary Warren quaking. Somewhat mentioned. But I said I never see no sign you ever sent your spirit out to hurt no one. And seeing I do live so closely with you, they dismissed it. Who accused me? I am bound by law. I cannot tell it. To Proctor. I only hope you'll not be so sarcastical no more. Four judges and the king's deputies sat to dinner with us but an hour ago. I, I would have you speak civilly to me from this out. Proctor in horror, muttering and disgusted her. Go to bed. Mary Warren with a stamp of her foot. I'll not be ordered to bed no more, Mr. Proctor. I am eighteen and a woman, however single. Do you wish to sit up? Then sit up. I wish to go to bed. Proctor in anger. Good night, then. Mary Warren. Good night. Dissatisfied, uncertain of herself, she goes out. Wide-eyed, both Proctor and Elizabeth stand staring. Elizabeth, quietly. Oh, the noose. The noose is up. There'll be no noose. She wants me dead. I knew all week it would come to this. Proctor, without conviction. They dismissed it. You heard her say. And of what tomorrow? She will cry me out until they take me. Sit you down. She wants me dead, John. You know it. I say sit down. She sits, trembling. He speaks quietly, trying to keep his wits. Now we must be wise, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, with sarcasm and a sense of being lost. Oh, indeed, indeed. Fear nothing. I'll find Ezekiel Cheever. I'll tell him she said it were all sport. John, with so many in the jail, more than Cheever's help is needed now, I think. Would you favor me with this? Go to Abigail. Proctor, his soul hardening as he senses. What have I to say to Abigail? Elizabeth delicately. John, grant me this. You have a faulty understanding of young girls. There is a promise made in any bed. Proctor striving against his anger. What promise? Spoke or silent. A promise is surely made. And she may dote on it now. I'm sure she does. And thinks to kill me, then to take my place. Proctor's anger is rising. He cannot speak. It is her deepest hope, John. I know it. There be a thousand names. Why does she call mine? There be a certain danger in calling such a name. I'm no goody good that sleeps in ditches near Osborne, drunk and half-witted. She dare not call out such a farmer's wife, but there be monstrous profit in it. She thinks to take my place, John. She cannot think it. He knows it is true. Elizabeth reasonably. John, have you ever shown her somewhat of contempt? She cannot pass you in the church, but you will blush. I may blush for my sin. I think she sees another meaning in that blush. And what see you? What see you, Elizabeth? Elizabeth conceding. I think you be somewhat ashamed, for I am there, and she's so close. When will you know me, woman? Or a stone I would have cracked for shame this seven month. Then go and tell her she's a whore. Whatever promise she may sense, break it, John. Break it. Proctor between his teeth. Good, then. I'll go. He starts for his rifle. Elizabeth trembling fearfully. Oh, how unwillingly. Proctor, turning on her, rifle in hand. I will curse her hotter than the oldest cinder in hell. But pray, begrudge me not my anger. 
Your anger? I only ask you, woman, am I so base? Do you truly think me base? I never called you base. Then how do you charge me with such a promise? The promise that a stallion gives a mare I give that girl. Then why do you anger with me when I bid you break it? Because it speaks deceit, and I am honest. But I'll plead no more. I see now your spirit twists around the single error of my life, and I will never tear it free. Elizabeth crying out. You'll tear it free when you come to know that I will be your only wife, or no wife at all. She has an arrow in you yet, John Proctor, and you know it well. Quite suddenly, as though from the air, a figure appears in the doorway. They start slightly. It is Mr. Hale. He is different now, drawn a little, and there is a quality of deference, even of guilt, about his manner now. Good evening. Proctor, still in his shock. What? Mr. Hale. Good evening to you, sir. Come in. Come in. Hale to Elizabeth. I hope I do not startle you. No, no, it's only that I heard no horse. You are good wife Proctor. I, Elizabeth. Hale, he nods then. I hope you're not off to bed yet. Proctor is setting down his gun. No, no. Hale comes further into the room, and Proctor to explain his nervousness. We are not used to visitors after dark, but you're welcome here. Will you sit down, sir? I will, he sits. Let you sit, good wife Proctor. She does, never letting him out of her sight. There is a pause as Hale looks about the room. Proctor, to break the silence. Will you drink cider, Mr. Hale? No, it rebels my stomach. I have some further traveling yet tonight. Sit you down, sir. Proctor sits. I will not keep you long, but I have some business with you. Business of the court? No, no. I come of my own, without the court's authority. You hear me? He wets his lips. I know not if you are aware, but your wife's name is mentioned in the court. We know it, sir. Our Mary Warren told us. We are entirely amazed. I am a stranger here, as you know, and in my ignorance I find it hard to draw a clear opinion of them that come accused before the court. And so this afternoon, and now tonight, I go from house to house. I come now from Rebecca Nurse's house, and Elizabeth shocked. Rebecca's charge? God forbid such a one be charged. She is, however, mentioned somewhat. Elizabeth, with an attempt at a laugh, you will never believe, I hope, that Rebecca trafficked with the devil. But woman, it is possible. Proctor, taken aback. Surely you cannot think so. This is a strange time, mister. No man may longer doubt the powers of the dark are gathered in monstrous attack upon this village. There is too much evidence now to deny it. You will agree, sir? Proctor, evading. I have no knowledge in that line. But it's hard to think so pious a woman be secretly a devil's bitch after seventy years of such good prayer. Aye. But the devil is a wily one. You cannot deny it. However, she is far from accused, and I know she will not be. Pause. I thought, sir, to put some questions as to the Christian character of this house, if you'll permit me. Proctor, coldly, resentful. Oh, I, we have no fear of questions, sir. Good, then. He makes himself more comfortable. In the book of record that Mr. Paris keeps, I note that you are rarely in the church on Sabbath day. No, sir, you are mistaken. Twenty-sixth time in seventeen months, sir. I must call that rare. Will you tell me why you are so absent? Mr. Hale, I never knew I must account to that man before I come to church or stay at home. My wife was sick this winter. So I'm told. But you, mister, why could you not come alone? I surely did come when I could, and when I could not, I prayed in this house. And Mr. Proctor, your house is not a church. Your theology must tell you that. It does, sir. It does. And it tells me that a minister may pray to God without he have golden candlesticks upon the altar. Golden candlesticks. Since we built the church there were pewter candlesticks upon the altar. Francis Nurse made them, you know, and a sweeter hand never touched the metal. But Paris came, and for twenty weeks he preached nothing but golden candlesticks until he had them. I labor the earth from dawn of day to blink of night, and I tell you true, when I look to heaven and see my money glaring at his elbows, it hurt my prayer, sir. It hurt my prayer. I think sometimes the man dreams cathedrals, not clapboard meeting houses. Hale, he thinks then. And yet, Mr. A Christian on Sabbath day must be in church. Pause. 
Tell me, you have three children? I, boys. How comes it that only two are baptized? Proctor, he starts to speak, and then stops, then, as though unable to restrain this. I like it not that Mr. Parrish should lay his hand upon my baby. I see the light of God in that man. I'll not conceal it. I must say it, Mr. Proctor. That is not for you to decide. The man's ordained, therefore the light of God is in him. Proctor flushed with resentment, but trying to smile. What's your suspicion, Mr. Hale? No, no, I have no... I nailed the roof upon that church. I hung the door. Oh, did you? That's a good sign, then. It may be I have been too quick to bring the man to book, but you cannot think we ever desired the destruction of religion. I think that's in your mind, is it not? Hale, not altogether giving way. I have... There is a softness in your record, sir. A softness. I think maybe we have been too hard with Mr. Paris. I think so. But sure, we never loved the devil here. Hale, he nods, deliberating this. Then, with the voice of one administering a secret test. Do you know your commandments, Elizabeth? Elizabeth, without hesitation, even eagerly. I surely do. There be no mark of blame upon my life, Mr. Hale. I am a covenanted Christian woman. And you, mister? Proctor, a trifle unsteadily. I am sure I do, sir. Hale, he glances at her open face, then at John, then... I'll let you repeat them, if you will. The commandments. Aye. Proctor, looking off, beginning to sweat. Thou shalt not kill. Aye. Proctor, counting on his fingers. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, nor make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. With some hesitation. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Pause. Then. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not bear false witness. He is stuck. He counts back on his fingers, knowing what is missing. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. You have said that one twice, sir. Proctor lost. Aye. He is flailing for it. Elizabeth delicately. Adultery, John. Proctor, as though a secret arrow had pained his heart. I, trying to grin it away, to Hale. You see, sir, between the two of us, we do know them all. Hale only looks at Proctor, deep in his attempt to define this man. Proctor grows more uneasy. I think it'd be a small fault. Theology, sir, is a fortress. No crack in a fortress may be accounted small. He rises. He seems worried now. He paces a little in deep thought. There be no love for Satan in this house, mister. I pray it. I pray it dearly. He looks to both of them, an attempt at a smile on his face, but his misgivings are clear. Well, then, I'll bid you a good night. Elizabeth unable to restrain herself. Mr. Hale, he turns. I do think you are suspecting me somewhat, are you not? Hale, obviously disturbed and evasive. Goody Proctor, I do not judge you. My duty is to add what I may to the godly wisdom of the court. I pray you both good health and good fortune. To John. Good night, sir. He starts out. Elizabeth with a note of desperation. I think you must tell him, John. What's that? Elizabeth restraining a call. Will you tell him? Slight pause. Hale looks questioningly at John. Proctor, with difficulty. I, I have no witness, can I prove it, except my word be taken. But I know the children's sickness had not to do with witchcraft. Hale stopped, struck. Not to do? Mr. Paris discovered them sporting in the woods. They were startled and took sick. Pause. Who told you this? Proctor. He hesitates, and then... Abigail Williams. Abigail? I. Hale, his eyes wide. Abigail Williams told you it had not to do with witchcraft. She told me the day you came, sir. Hale suspiciously. What? Why did you keep this? I never knew until tonight that the world has gone daft with this nonsense. 
Nonsense. Mister, I have myself examined Tichuba, Sergud, and numerous others that have confessed to dealing with the devil. They have confessed it. And why not, if they must hang for denying it? There are them that will swear to anything before they'll hang. Have you never thought of that? I have. I have indeed. It is his own suspicion, but he resists it. He glances at Elizabeth, then at John. And you? Would you testify to this in court? I had not reckoned with going into court, but if I must, I will. Do you falter here? I falter nothing, but I may wonder if my story will be credited in such a court. I do wonder on it. When such a steady-minded minister as you will suspicion such a woman that never lied and cannot, and the world knows she cannot, I may falter somewhat, mister. I'm no fool. Hail quietly. It has impressed him. Proctor, let you open with me now, for I have a rumor that troubles me. It said you hold no belief that there may even be witches in the world. Is that true, sir? Proctor, he knows this is critical and is striving against his disgust with Hale and with himself for even answering. I know not what I've said. I may have said it. I've wondered if there be witches in the world, although I cannot believe they come among us now. Then you do not believe I have no knowledge of it. The Bible speaks of witches, and I will not deny them. And you, woman? I, I cannot believe it. Hale shocked. You cannot? Elizabeth, you bewilder him. Elizabeth to Hale. I cannot think the devil may own a woman's soul, Mr. Hale, when she keeps an upright way as I have. I'm a good woman, I know it, and if you believe I may do only good work in the world and yet be secretly bound to Satan, then I must tell you, sir, I do not believe it. But, woman, you do believe there are witches, and if you think that I am one, then I say there are none. You surely do not fly against the gospel. The gospel. She believes in the gospel, every word. Question Abigail about the gospel, not myself. Hale stares at her. She did not mean to doubt the gospel, sir. You could not think it. This be a Christian house, sir. A Christian house. God keep you both. Let the third child be quickly baptized, and go you without fail each Sunday into Sabbath prayer, and keep a solemn, quiet way among you. I think... Giles Corey appears in doorway. John! Giles, what's the matter? They take my wife, Francis Nurse enters, and his Rebecca, Proctor to Francis. Rebecca's in the jail? Aye, Cheever come and take her in his wagon. We've only now come from the jail, and they'll not even let us in to see them. They've surely gone wild now, Mr. Hale. Francis going to Hale. Reverend Hale, can you not speak to the deputy governor? I'm sure he mistakes these people. Pray calm yourself, Mr. Nurse. My wife is the very brick and mortar of the church, Mr. Hale, indicating Giles. And Martha Corey, there cannot be a woman closer yet to God than Martha. How is Rebecca charged, Mr. Nurse? Francis, with a mocking, half-hearted laugh. For murder, she's charged. Mockingly quoting the warrant. For the marvelous and supernatural murder of Goody Putnam's babies. What am I to do, Mr. Hale? Hale, he turns from Francis, deeply troubled, then... Believe me, Mr. Nurse, if Rebecca Nurse be tainted, then nothing's left to stop the whole green world from burning. Let you rest upon the justice of the court. The court will send her home, I know it. You cannot mean she will be tried in court? Hale pleading. Nurse, though our hearts break, we cannot flinch. These are new times, sir. There is a misty plot afoot so subtle we should be criminal to cling to old respects and ancient friendships. I've seen too many frightful proofs in court. The devil is alive in Salem and we dare not quail to follow wherever the accusing finger points. Proctor, angered. How may such a woman murder children? Hale, in great pain. Man, remember, till an hour before the devil fell, God thought him beautiful in heaven. I never said my wife were a witch, Mr. Hale. Only said she were reading books. Mr. Corey, exactly what complaint were made on your wife? That bloody mongrel Walcott charged her. You see, he buy a pig, my wife, four or five year ago, and the pig died soon after. So he come dancing in for his money back. So my Martha, she says to him, Walcott, if you haven't the wit to feed a pig properly, you'll not live to own many. She says, now he goes to court and claims that from that day to this, he cannot keep a pig alive for more than four weeks because my Martha bewitched them with her books. Enter Ezekiel Cheever, a shocked silence. 
Why, Mr. Cheever, good evening. Good evening, all. Good evening, Mr. Hale. I hope you come not on business of the court. I do, Proctor, I. I am clerk of the court now, you know. Enter Marshal Herrick, a man in his early thirties who is somewhat shamefaced at the moment. It's a pity, Ezekiel, that an honest tailor might have gone to heaven must burn in hell. You'll burn for this, do you know it? You know yourself, I must do as I'm told. You surely know that, Giles. And I'd as lief you'd not to be sending me to hell. I like not the sound of it, I tell you. I like not the sound of it. He fears Proctor, but starts to reach inside his coat. Now believe me, Proctor, how heavy be the law, all its tonnage I do carry on my back tonight. He takes out a warrant. I have a warrant for your wife. Proctor to Hale. You said she were not charged. I know nothing of it. To Cheever. When were she charged? I am given sixteen warrant tonight, sir, and she is one. Who charged her? Why, Abigail Williams charged her. On what proof? What proof? Cheever, looking about the room. Mr. Proctor, I have little time. The court bid me search your house, but I like not to search your house. So will you hand me any puppets that your wife may keep here? Puppets? I never kept no puppets, not since I were a girl. Cheever, embarrassed, glancing toward the mantel where sits Mary Warren's puppet. A spy puppet, Goody Proctor. Oh, going for it. Why, this is Mary's. Cheever, shyly. Would you please to give it to me? Elizabeth, handing it to him, asks Hale, Has the court discovered a text in poppets now? Cheever, carefully holding the poppet. Do you keep any others in this house? No, nor this one either till tonight. What signifies a poppet? Why, a puppet. He gingerly turns the poppet over. A puppet may signify. Now, woman? Will you please to come with me? She will not. To Elizabeth. Uh, fetch Mary here. Cheever, ineptly reaching toward Elizabeth. No, no, I am forbid to leave her from my sight. Proctor, pushing his arm away. You'll leave her out of sight and out of mind, mister. Uh, fetch Mary, Elizabeth. Elizabeth goes upstairs. What signifies a puppet, Mr. Cheever? Cheever, turning the puppet over in his hands. Why, they say it may signify that she... He has lifted the puppet's skirt, and his eyes widen in astonished fear. Why, this. This. Proctor reaching for the poppet. What's there? What? He draws out a long needle from the poppet. It is a needle. Herrick! Herrick, it is a needle! Herrick comes toward him. Proctor, angrily, bewildered. And what signifies a needle? Cheever, his hands shaking. Why, this go hard with her, Proctor, this... I had my doubts, Proctor. I had my doubts, but here's calamity. To Hale, showing the needle. You see it, sir. It is a needle. Why? What meaning has it? Cheever, wide-eyed, trembling. The girl, the Williams girl, Abigail Williams, sir. She sat to dinner in Reverend Pierce's house tonight, and without word nor warning, she falls to the floor. Like a struck beast, he says, and screamed a scream that a bull would weep to hear. And he goes to save her, and stuck two inches in the flesh of her belly, he draw a needle out. And demanding of her how she come to be so stabbed, she, to Proctor now, testify it were your wife's familiar spirit pushed it in. Why, she'd done it herself, to Hale. I hope you're not taking this for proof, mister. Hale, struck by the proof, is silent. Tis hard proof, to Hale. I find it here, a puppet Goody Proctor keeps. I have found it, sir, and in the belly of the puppet a needle stuck. Tell you true, Proctor, I never wanted to see such proof of hell, and I bid you obstruct me not, for I enter Elizabeth with Mary Warren. Proctor, seeing Mary Warren, draws her by the arm to hail. Here now, Mary, how did this puppet come into my house? Mary Warren, frightened for herself, her voice very small. What puppet's that, sir? Proctor, impatiently pointing at the doll in Cheever's hand. This puppet! This puppet! Mary Warren, evasively, looking at it. Oh, I... I think it is mine. It is your poppet, is it not? Mary Warren, not understanding the direction of this. It is, sir. And how did it come into this house? Mary Warren, glancing about at the avid faces. What? I made it in the court, sir, and give it to Goody Proctor tonight. 
Proctor to Hale. And now, sir, do you have it? Mary Warren. A needle had been found inside this puppet. Mary Warren, bewildered. Why, oh, I, I meant no harm by it, sir. Proctor, quickly. You stuck that needle in yourself. I, I believe I did, sir. I, Proctor to Hale. What say you now? Hale, watching Mary Warren closely. Child, you are certain this be your natural memory. May it be perhaps that someone conjures you even now to say this? Conjures me? Why, no, sir. I am entirely myself, I think. Let you ask Susanna Walcott. She saw me sew in it in court. Or better still. Ask Abby. Abby sat beside me when I made it. Proctor to Hale of Cheever. Bid him be gone. Your mind is surely settled now. Bid him out, Mr. Hale. What signifies the needle? Mary. You charge a cold and cruel murder on Abigail. Murder? I charge no. Abigail were stabbed tonight. A needle were found stuck into her belly, and she charges me. I. Elizabeth, her breath knocked out. <laughs> the girl is murder. She must be ripped out of the world. Cheever pointing at Elizabeth. You've heard that, sir. Ripped out of the world. Eric, you heard it. Proctor suddenly snatching the warrant out of Cheever's hand. Out with you. Proctor. You dare not touch the warrant. Proctor ripping the warrant. Out with you. You've ripped the deputy governor's warrant, man. Damn the deputy governor. Out of my house. Now Proctor. Proctor. Get ye gone with them. You are a broken minister. Proctor. If she is innocent, the court... If she is innocent? Why do you never wonder if Paris be innocent? Or Abigail? Is the accuser always holy now? Were they born this morning as clean as God's fingers? I'll tell you what's walking Salem. Vengeance is walking Salem. We are what we always were in Salem, but now the little crazy children are jangling the keys of the kingdom and common vengeance writes the law. This warrants vengeance. I'll not give my wife to vengeance. I'll go, John. You will not go. I have nine men outside. You cannot keep her. The law binds me, John. I cannot budge. Proctor to Hale, ready to break him. Will you see her taken? Proctor, the court is just Pontius Pilate. God will not let you wash your hands of this. John, I think I must go with them. You cannot bear to look at her. Mary, there is bread enough for the morning. Will you bake in the afternoon? Help Mr. Proctor as you were his daughter. You owe me that and much more. She is fighting her weeping to Proctor. When the children wake... Speak nothing of witchcraft. It'll frighten them. She cannot go on. I will bring you home. I will bring you soon. Oh, John, bring me soon. I will fall like an ocean on the court. Fear nothing, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, with great fear. I will fear nothing. She looks about the room as though to fix it in her mind. Tell the children I've gone to visit someone sick. She walks out the door, Herrick and Cheever behind her. For a moment, Proctor watches from the doorway. The clank of chain is heard. Herrick! Herrick, don't chain her! He rushes out the door from outside. Damn you, man! You will not chain her! Off with them! I'll not have it! I will not have her chained! There are other men's voices against his. Hale, in a fever of guilt and uncertainty, turns from the door to avoid the sight. Mary Warren bursts into tears and sits weeping. Giles Corey calls to Hale. And yet silent, minister? It is fraud, and you know it is fraud. What keeps you, man? Proctor is half-braced, half-pushed into the room by two deputies and Herrick. I'll pay you, Herrick. I will surely pay you. Herrick, panting. In God's name, John, I cannot help myself. I must chain them all. Now let you keep inside this house until I'm gone. He goes out with his deputies. Proctor stands there, gulping air. Horses and a wagon creaking are heard. Hale in great uncertainty. Mr. Proctor, out of my sight. Charity, Proctor, charity. What I have heard in her favor, I will not fear to testify in court. God help me, I cannot judge her guilty or innocent. I know not. Only this consider. The world goes mad, and it profit nothing you should lay the cause to the vengeance of a little girl. You are a coward. Though you be ordained in God's own tears, you are a coward now. Proctor, I cannot think God be provoked so grandly by such a petty cause. The jails are packed. 
Our greatest judges sit in Salem now, and Hengen's promised. Man, we must look to a cause proportionate. Were their murder done? Perhaps and never brought to light? Abomination? Some secret blasphemy that stinks to heaven? Think on cause, man, and let you help me to discover it. For there's your way, believe it, there is your only way, when such confusion strikes upon the world. He goes to Giles and Francis. Let you counsel among yourselves. Think on your village and what you may have drawn from heaven such thundering wrath upon you all. I shall pray God open up your eyes. Hale goes out. Francis, struck by Hale's mood, I never heard no murder done in Salem. Proctor, he has been reached by Hale's words. Leave me, Francis. Leave me. Giles, shaken. John, tell me, are we lost? Go home now, Giles. We'll speak on it tomorrow. Let you think on it. We'll come early, eh? Aye. Go now, Giles. Good night, then. Giles Corey and Francis Nurse go out. After a moment, Mary Warren, in a fearful squeak of a voice, Mr. Proctor, very likely they'll let her come home once they've given proper evidence. You're coming to the court with me, Mary. You will tell it in the court. I cannot charge murder on Abigail. Proctor, moving menacingly toward her. You will tell the court how that puppet came here and who stuck the needle in. She'll kill me for saying that. Proctor continues toward her. Abby will charge lechery on you, Mr. Proctor. Proctor halting. She's told you? I have known it, sir. She'll ruin you with it. I know she will. Proctor, hesitating, and with deep hatred of himself. Good. Then her saintliness is done with. Mary backs from him. We will slide together into our pit. You will tell the court what you know. Mary Warren in terror. I cannot. They'll turn on me. Proctor strides and catches her, and she is repeating, I cannot, I cannot. My wife will never die for me. I will bring your guts into your mouth, but that goodness will not die for me. Mary Warren struggling to escape him. I cannot do it. I cannot. Proctor, grasping her by the throat as though he would strangle her. Make your peace with it. Now hell and heaven grapple on our backs and all our old pretenses ripped away. Make your peace. He throws her to the floor where she sobs. I cannot. I cannot. And now, half to himself, staring and turning to the open door. Peace. It is a providence, and no great change. We are only what we always were, but naked now. He walks as though toward a great horror, facing the open sky. I, naked, and the wind, God's icy wind, will blow. And she is over and over again sobbing, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, as the curtain falls. <laughs>